Now, breaking news from WRAL. Coverage you can count on. All flights from several major airlines are grounded right now. We'll show you the situation here on a busy morning at RDU. And we, of course, had some showers and storms yesterday evening. We're quiet right now, but more rain and storms on the way. We're going to time it out on FeatureCast coming up. On the final night of the Republican National Convention, former President Donald Trump talked about his attempted assassination publicly for the first time. I stand before you in this arena only by the grace of Almighty God. We have highlights from his speech, which was the longest ever at a convention. And this morning, speculation on whether President Biden will drop out of the 2024 presidential race is growing. We'll break down what that could mean as Nancy Pelosi plans to join Governor Roy Cooper in Raleigh tomorrow. And that is noteworthy because if Biden decides to step aside, there is speculation that there could be a Harris Cooper ticket. Well, good morning, everyone. It is 430. You've got Chu Hogan ticket. Right now, I'm Renee Chu. I'm Jeff Hogan. Or Hogan yeah. Chu. We have that e either way. It's found me alphabetically. Chu Hogan. <laughs> it all sounds good, and we're just glad that you're with us here. We got some soaking rain yesterday that was we sure much did. needed, right? Mm -hmm. Anthony Baglione over in the WRS Severe Weather Center right now. Some clouds hanging over North Hills. Yeah, it was a busy evening for us, and then, yeah, we have that low cloud cover out there right now. This is our North Hills camera, and you can see it's definitely obstructing some of that visibility right there this morning. I don't anticipate big issues over the next couple of hours as far as fog or anything like that. However, we could still see those visibilities down at the moment. They're at about five miles out in front of you in Raleigh and Durham at seven in Clinton. That may be a factor as you're out and about driving this morning. So just keep that in mind. Temperatures are about where we were yesterday. We're in the mid seventies. It feels just a touch better, but we're going to still hang on to some humidity as we go through today. There's all the rainfall that storm system pushing offshore that we had yesterday evening. We're quiet here for the morning commute. You should not have any issues out the door, but then when we get into the afternoon, very similar to what we saw yesterday, minus the severe potential. We are looking at some showers and storms coming back in. There's three, four, five o'clock or so. That is something we will be tracking there for the evening commute. Many more rain chances, though, on the way. We're going to talk about those in our weekend forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Breaking news. If you have a flight today, you may have trouble getting to your destination. A widespread technology outage has grounded flights around the world this morning. Other businesses like banks and media groups are also having issues. WRL's Monica Casey, Casey joins us live from RDU. And Monica, this is certainly going to be frustrating for travelers. Yeah, Renee, it definitely is. What we know right now from the FAA is that flights from several major airlines, including United, American, and Delta, are grounded regardless of their destination. Take a look at the size of this line here behind me. This is just for Delta customers to give you an idea of how busy it is here at RDU this morning. The departures board over here above this baggage line is also showing many flights delayed. We see one to Atlanta. Austin, Boston, Charlotte, Chicago, all of these flights showing up as delayed right now here at RDU. It is a busy morning, a Friday in the summer, a lot of people traveling. We are expecting some kind of update from the FAA coming up at 5 a.m. At RDU, Monica Casey, WREL News. It was a wild weather day in the Triangle yesterday. We could experience some more of that tonight. In downtown Raleigh, first responders performed a water rescue right near Union Station. A woman's car stalled out in those high flood waters there. A few blocks over, water flooded Hargett Street. In Durham, storms toppled this tree behind this medical plaza on Hillendale Road. And another on Holder Road. Then in Garner, a rainbow appeared as the storms came to an end. Several unnamed people close to President Biden say he appears close to making a decision on whether to abandon his campaign for a second term. This comes as Nancy Pelosi is set to visit with Governor Roy Cooper tomorrow in Raleigh. WRL's Destiny Patterson joins us live from the Democratic headquarters in Raleigh. And Destiny, we're getting a better idea of what a new Democratic ticket could look like if Biden decides to drop out of the race. 
Well, all eyes are on North Carolina at this point. Of course, Vice President Kamala Harris was just in North Carolina yesterday, and now we have Nancy Pelosi coming to town tomorrow. And this, these are just two examples of the recent efforts to gain traction here in North Carolina. Pelosi and former President Obama have reportedly expressed concerns about Biden's candidacy. And now there's new attention on North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper. Two people close to the Biden-Harris campaign told the New York Times that Cooper could be a viable option as vice president. In their efforts to win over North Carolina, a former chair of the Democratic National Committee told CNN he would favor a Harris-Cooper ticket. A political science professor says he believes there's a sense that Cooper could help rescue North Carolina for Democrats. Cooper makes a lot of sense on paper. Um, he was an attorney general at the same time Kamala Harris is attorney general. They know each other. As you just said, she at least says publicly that she likes Roy Cooper. Um, he's not a controversial figure in any way. It would have relatively little impact. Uh, the last time uh, a North Carolinian was vice president, I think North Carolina went a Republican by about 12 points or so. And I would take great uh, delight in helping ensure a similar outcome this year. Cooper previously said he hadn't had any conversations about taking on that role and that he didn't need that kind of speculation. Vice President Harris has continued to show support for Biden. At this point, the Democratic National Committee plans to move forward with its virtual roll call to nominate Joe Biden. Destiny Patterson, WRL News, Raleigh. Former President Donald Trump is now officially the Republican nominee for president again. He accepted the nomination in a 93-minute speech last night to close out the Republican National Convention. In his speech, Trump highlighted the deep policy differences between himself and President Joe Biden. That includes on issues ranging from immigration to energy policy to economy. He also recounted the moments immediately after the assassination attempt on him at a rally over the weekend in Pennsylvania. I raised my right arm, looked at the thousands and thousands of people that were breathlessly waiting, and started shouting, fight, fight, fight. Some of the people in attendance at the convention wore bandages on their ears, similar to the one Trump has worn since the shooting. In his speech, Trump said he is calling for unity, saying he's running to be president for the whole country, not half of it. Coming up in 10 minutes, Trump's emotional tribute to Corey Comprator, the man who was shot and killed at Saturday's rally in Pennsylvania. Former First Lady Melania Trump showed up for the final night of the RNC. This is Melania's first public appearance alongside her husband in a long time. Trump thanked Melania during his speech, saying he was deeply honored to be joined by his wife. Melania later joined Donald Trump on stage along with the rest of the Trump family. Two people are out of their home after this huge fire destroyed it. This happened on Last Wade Drive near Pinehurst just before 8.30 last night. Fire officials say one of the homeowners walked outside and saw the garage fully engulfed. Both people who lived there were able to get out safely along with the pet dog before the fire spread to the living area. Investigators are working to learn what caused that fire. We're expecting to learn more today about NC State Chancellor Randy Woodson's decision to retire at the end of the upcoming school year. He made the announcement yesterday. Over his more than 14 years as chancellor, Woodson had a lot of success elevating NC State on a national stage. But the closure of Poe Hall and the fallout since has changed the way some view his legacy. Woodson's contract expires on June 30th, 2025, which is when he's expected to retire. Wilson County Church, there is a total loss this morning after a massive fire. Neighbors say lightning hit the steeple of Spring Hill Presbyterian Church in Lukama, and it sparked a fire that caused the roof to collapse. Here's firefighters had to break out stained glass windows to get into that building. It took eight different departments over an hour to get the fire under control. Members of the church tried to salvage as much as they could. They talked about how big this loss is for their community. It's just overwhelming. It's such a loss for all of the church family. We've had weddings and funerals and births and deaths. It, it, you know, we just love to attend, and it's, real, it's a huge loss for all of us. No one was hurt in that fire. 
Today marks one year since a destructive EF3 tornado hit Nash County. The tornado touched down on July 19, 2023, around 12.30 p.m. in the Battleboro and Dorches communities. An estimated 90 homes and buildings were damaged or destroyed, including the Pfizer plant in Rocky Mount. This tornado was, happened very quickly. It was the first EF3 tornado to ever hit central North Carolina in the month of July. New videos show the terrifying moment a crane fell into a bridge in Florida last April. We'll show you the moments that jump, people jumped into action to get folks to safety there. A college professor is heading to the Paris Olympics. How he plans to use his skateboarding skills to help heal social problems. And we'll give you this live look in Clinton this morning. We are expecting some storms this afternoon. Meteorologist Anthony Baglione will be along after the break. He'll give us that weekend forecast we're looking forward to. From the WRAL Severe Weather Center, North Carolina's most experienced team of meteorologists. It is just about 443 here on this Friday morning, where, of course, yesterday it was really busy for us. Yesterday evening, especially, we had numerous flash flood warnings that came out, severe thunderstorm warnings. Where we sit right now, though, you can kind of see the leftover of that system. Most of that rainfall, that storm activity is pushing toward the coast. So unfortunately, if you're planning a beach trip today, this afternoon, it doesn't look like it's going to be the best weather. We take future cast ahead, though. The morning commute is looking just fine. There could be some low cloud cover that may make it feel a little bit almost foggier kind of that misty feel out there this morning. Here's lunchtime though in this afternoon. We're not expecting severe weather, but we could see another chance for some showers and storms coming through starting probably as early as about 2 to 3 p.m. this afternoon. During a speech at the Republican National Convention, former President Donald Trump paid tribute to the man who was killed during the assassination attempt Saturday. He asked for a moment of silence for Corey Comprator. Comprator's firefighting gear was sent to the convention and was on display during Trump's speech. Trump walked over to it and kissed it on stage. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for others. This is the spirit that forged America in her darkest hours. Comprator will be laid to rest today in Pennsylvania during a private funeral. Saturday's shooting also critically injured two other spectators at the rally. Trump says they are recovering and will be okay. He says supporters have raised more than $6 million for the families of the people shot. New videos show the terrifying moments a crane fell from a building in Florida, a piece of it hitting cars below. This happened in Fort Lauderdale back in April. And you can see a chunk of the crane hitting two cars, landing right on top of one of them. A dashboard camera from farther away shows the crane tumbling through the air. And police body cam video shows workers explaining what happened. Something snapped that made that thing fall. Okay. Because that thing was already in place. Okay. So, so, so there's nothing that hit it or caused it to, no. to fail? No. A construction worker died. Another was badly hurt. The owner of the car the crane landed on has filed a lawsuit. The union representing many behind the scenes film workers has reached a deal with studios. Members of the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees voted to ratify a three year contract. The deal raises wages 7% the first year and then 4% and 3.5% the following years. That's the same structure agreed to by SAG AFTRA members last year in that union's high profile strike. The contract also contains protections against artificial intelligence. As of this week, over 3 million acres have burned in the U.S. by wildfires this year. And with extreme heat continuing in some parts of the country, there is a high risk for more large wildfires to spark. The National Interagency Fire Center has increased its preparedness to its highest level. This green lights a larger scale operation for wildfire control like hotshot crews, air tankers, smoke jumpers and communications equipment. <laughs> Cumberland County is hosting a job fair today to connect you to different careers. The county's more than two dozen departments will be on hand to answer questions and take applications for a variety of positions. The fair runs from 10 to 3 at the Crown Expo Center on Coliseum Drive in Fayetteville. Raleigh leaders want you to learn, live and eat tomorrow at what they're calling Saturday on South. They'll have free food and fun for the whole family on West South Street between Dawson and McDowell Streets. The city says it's a chance to learn about the plan to relocate Red Hat Amphitheater in the area. If the plan is adopted, South Street will likely be closed between Dawson and McDowell Streets for pedestrian traffic.
A university professor is heading to the Olympics in Paris, not as an athlete, but as an ambassador. Neftali Williams is a professor at San Diego State University. He's also an envoy for the U.S. Department of State as the ambassador of skateboarding. He says the sport has the power to build communities and create social change. And we start to engage both, in this instance, the city of Paris, um, community centers, um, and community advocates and leaders to think about how skateboarding brings young people together and how we as adults can sort of tap into that and help them think of themselves as global citizens. Williams is the director of San Diego State's Center of Skateboarding, Action Sports, and Social Change. He says he's already seen change in action through programs he has started around the world. It's one hip title there, right? Ambassador of Skateboarding. Let's get over to Anthony Baglione right now in the WRO Severe Weather Center. And, uh, you know, waiting on sunrise here. Will there be one? Is it too cloudy for that? I think we'll see some sunshine. Yeah, we had, by the way, some beautiful pictures coming in yesterday evening. As the sun was going down, we had some rainbow pictures with all the rain coming through them. We'll try and get some of those here to, to you throughout the morning. It was beautiful. Where we sit right now, though, there's a look at our RDU camera. They would be flying through some of that low cloud cover and then getting up to a pretty nice clear sky here once we go through the morning. We sit right now, you can see the low clouds dropping visibilities down to about five miles here in the triangle. Not any huge concerns this morning for most of our viewing area. You can see everyone else is looking pretty good, but that may be a potential as we go through the next couple of hours. Just a little bit of almost that kind of foggy, misty feeling out there this morning. We sit at 75, 72 there in Roxborough, 75 around the triangle, 73 in Southern Pines. It's very similar to the temperatures that we saw yesterday. Humidity levels have not come down so Substantially, it's almost a repeat morning for us, only with that low cloud cover out there currently. We go through the day. Here's Futurecast. You can see I'm going to leave this on the wide view to get you an idea here if you're traveling across the state today or just starting off your weekend early. Here's 7 o'clock this morning. So we're dry on Futurecast. Nothing to worry about as far as any rain coming down this morning. It's when we get into this afternoon and evening, like we saw yesterday, where we could see some bubble up storms yet again, especially along the coast. There you see that coverage could be a little bit heavier. We're not looking at severe weather today. There's not a severe risk outline at this point, but you see there by about 5 o'clock, we could could see some of these just summertime thunderstorms coming on through. We still could use a little bit more rainfall, and I do think we'll see some kind of off and on coverage through the rest of today. 88 degrees though this afternoon. That will be kind of a change compared to the pattern we've been in. Temperatures, I don't think we'll even get into the 90s today. Scattered storms through this afternoon and the evening, and then they start to taper off into tonight. At the beaches this weekend, yeah, fortunately not looking like the best forecast either. 91 tomorrow in Wilmington, 85 Wrightsville. It'd be good to hang inside. We're looking at some decent rainfall chances across the area. And then back here at home, we also have yet again another severe risk outline for tomorrow. Level one at this point, the overall risk remains very low. It's kind of similar to what we saw yesterday, only I think we could see some gusty winds across the area. Not any huge concerns with that. 86 tomorrow, 87 on Saturday. Look at all of those rain chances, though. No day is a total washout. No day is completely dry here over the next seven. 90 degrees, guys, is our kind of hottest temperature over the next seven days. Anthony, thanks. Adults are surpassing kids to become the biggest buyers for the toy industry. We'll tell you about the trend gaining traction with people called kidulting. Also, the recipients of the 2024 Kennedy Center honors have been revealed, including the first physical institution to be honored. We'll tell you which iconic music venue will be recognized. Twister star Glenn Powell is branching out from his newly found fame. David Daniel has more in today's Hollywood Minute. Glenn Powell is chasing more than movie stardom. As the Twister star prepares for his next film role, he's also working on getting his college degree. Powell tells IndieWire he'll be in class at the University of Texas in Austin when he can, when he's in London shooting The Running Man, a remake of the movie based on the Stephen King novel, he'll attend classes via Zoom. Powell says Running Man director Edgar Wright has been very nice about giving him time to study during production. Cirque goes country. Cirque du Soleil Song Blazers, the performing collective's first show dedicated to country music and its storytelling, debuted in Nashville, Tennessee this month, and the show's soundtrack album, ranging from classic ballads to modern hits, goes on sale today. No same man would want the play to see. The men were dangerous. 
are the ones who do want it. That sounds ominous. The Pope has died, and a new pontiff must be chosen. But a secret threatens the entire Catholic Church in conclave. Rafe Fiennes, Stanley Tucci, John Lithgow, and Isabella Rossellini star in the Vatican thriller. The official trailer was just released, and the film opens in select theaters November 1st and across the U.S. November 8th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Toys aren't just a kid's game anymore. More and more adults are embracing their inner child. It's called kidulting. Experts say the trend picked up during the pandemic when a lot of adults were turning to memories from their youth. And that led to a boom in sales of toys and collectibles that remain steady today. It definitely uh, has been riding a lot on nostalgia, um, and I feel like in the middle of COVID, it really gave people the opportunity to explore that area. Detail from a retail research company shows adults have surpassed kids ages three to five to become the biggest customer demographic in the toy industry. This year's Kennedy Center Honors recipients have been announced, and they are Oscar-winning filmmaker Francis Ford Coppola, singer Bonnie Raitt, the Grateful Dead, Cuban-American jazz trumpeter Arturo Sandoval. And for the first time ever, a physical institution is being honored, Harlem's Apollo Theater. It is celebrating its 90th anniversary. The Apollo was a debut venue for a number of black performers who went on to become famous. They're all being honored with the Lifetime Artistic Achievement Award. The ceremony for this 47th class of recipients is December 8th. In Johnson County, the town of Selmo will celebrate 100 years of its Union Station this morning. It hasn't seen much action in recent years, but the town is looking to change that. Renovations are on the way, and the projected Raleigh to Wilmington train route would likely stop in Selma. The town will celebrate the station's history with food, games, and live music starting this morning at 9. We're following breaking news this morning. A global internet outage is affecting airlines from the U.S. to Australia. We'll tell you how this is affecting flights at RDU, where you're looking live right now. Look at those long lines. And on the final night of the Republican National Convention, former President Trump accepts his party's GOP presidential nomination. I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America. What he said in his address to supporters and what he had to say about the attempted assassination against him.